Hi, welcome to the Forest of Arden. My name is Chris Ryan. Today's video, we're talking about hand path, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail about what it should do through the golf ball and exactly why it should do that. So this is really in response to a video that I did uh, probably a couple of months back now entitled Hand Path or something along those lines. I will put a link down below in the description if you want to go and watch that video. Um, and it was really talking about how the path of the hands um, what it should be, I guess, through the golf swing and how that might be different between downswing and backswing. And of all the videos that I've done, that one seemed to provoke the most amount of comments with people uh, either disagreeing or maybe not understanding exactly what I was trying to say. Um, now, that's my fault. I'll take responsibility for that. It's my job to convey or pass the information over to you in a way that you can understand it and it makes sense. So, you know, maybe I didn't explain that well enough, but this video is hopefully going to go into that a little bit more detail uh, and give you some ideas about what you might want to look for in your hand path. And hopefully for the golfers who watched that video first, who didn't quite understand it, this one will clear up a few things. So by hand path, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking very simply about how the hands move in the golf swing. And for the purpose of this video, we're going to talk about this part of the golf club here. We're going to talk about the, the bottom of the grip. We're going to talk about where that should be through the swing. Now, the gist of the video before was that if we checked, if we marked where the grip was at setup, in takeaway, that grip would move almost initially straight back towards the camera. And it would maintain the same distance from my body in that takeaway. On the downswing, so when I'm about to hit the ball, when the club is at last parallel, that video was saying that the grip should be further out towards the golf ball, as you can see there. Now, the, the comments that I had um, on that video were things along the lines of, you know, if my hands are further out, then I'm going to shank it, or that's going to promote a shank, or, you know, this is going to make people shank the ball, etc., etc. And there's definitely a little bit of a... Um, you know, an idea that moving the hands out towards the ball was going to compromise the strike. Now, the main thing to appreciate here was we're talking about last parallel. Those hands are not going to be that far out as you hit the golf ball. But let's just go through exactly why those hands are going to be where they are. So I'm just going to take my starting position to this golf ball. And I've only got a mid iron here, but I've got a six iron. So in my back swing, there's going to be a few things that happen. I'm certainly going to have some body turn. That's definitely going to be there. But in my arms, there's going to be a few things as well. I'm going to create in my back swing some wrist set. So this would be wrist set here. Now you can see from the down the line camera there, when I use my wrists, the grip of the club doesn't really move too much. The club head moves up and I create that wrist set, but the grip doesn't move too much. The other thing that will happen is that my arms will have about 90 degrees of rotation to the right. Now as I move my hands and I rotate the golf club to the right, in this case you will see the grip of the golf club move out and away from me. So as I do that again, you'll notice that the wrist set, grip doesn't move, but as I move that club head to the right, the grip moves out and away from me. Now, what I also want you to notice is that as I do that, watch where my right or my trial elbow is. It stays very much in its position. So when we're looking at that from the face on, you'll notice that my trial elbow is very much in front of my body. You can probably, maybe, almost see the pocket on my right side outside of my elbow. Now, when that happens, the grip of the golf club has to move away from me. That's just the way our bodies are, are designed. So if I was the golfer who said, well, I don't really want the grip to move away, we can do that as well. I can use my wrists, which moves the club up. And if I didn't want that grip to move away from me and I had to move the golf club to the right, I can do. But you'll notice how my elbow has to move very much more to the side of me. So as I move that club to the right, again from that down the line camera, the grip will stay where it is, but my arm has to sit more behind me. So my right elbow gets a little bit more to the side of my body rather than in front of my body. So we can achieve a position at last parallel where the hands are not further out than they were in the takeaway. But it's probably going to mean that the elbow gets a little bit more behind you, a little bit more stuck to the side. And when that happens, for us to make good contact, strike the ball well, have that kind of forward shuffling, that compression, we have to have a huge amount of rotation. And in more cases than not, having the elbow to the side of your body and the hands too much in is going to mean that the golfer releases very early and achieves an impact such as this. So, the majority of golfers that you're going to watch on TV, ladies tour, gents tour, seniors tour, will have the grip slightly more out at last parallel than it was at setup. The only reason for that is because what they are trying to do 
is they're trying to get this elbow to be a little bit more in front of them. Now there you can see the grip is more out, my elbow is more in front. Now, as I undo that rotation of my arms that I had in that backswing, and the club head moves down towards the golf ball, you will notice that the hands and the grip will move back inwards. So the hands are working now into my body. Now, through this video, I'm possibly demonstrating these movements a little bit more extreme than we'd see them in the golf swing. I don't think the grip would move inwards that much. I don't think it'd probably be that far out at last parallel, but I'm just making these a little bit more exaggerated for the purpose of the video. So you'll notice that takeaway, the grip is there. In the takeaway, it doesn't move away from me. But as I maintain the rotation of my arms and I want my elbow more in front, the grip is definitely more outward. But as I deliver the club to the ball, the hands will move in, the grip will move in. And when I strike the golf ball, we're probably not a million miles away from where we were at setup. But I'm certainly not going to shank the golf ball because I'm not suggesting that when you hit the golf ball, your hands are going to be further away than they were at setup. This is last parallel, when that club reaches parallel to the ground. The added advantage to this movement is that when we can get that grip moving inwards towards you as you strike the golf ball, it's going to add a huge amount of speed to the golf club. It's a fantastic way to put speed and put energy into that golf club. The golfers who don't have the ability to move the grip in are going to be using other ways to add speed. And that's when we tend to see those poorer releases where the right arm gets back, the club overtakes the hands, all these kind of things. So at last parallel, I would like to see the hands a little bit more out than they were at setup. That does not mean that's where they're gonna be at impact. That does not mean you're gonna shank it. It just means that you've got great arm structure. You've maintained some of the rotation that you create in the backswing. Your trail arm is positioned nicely in front of you. And then as you pivot through the golf ball and release the golf club, we're gonna see the hands move back in. And that movement is gonna mean that you will not strike at the heel. Notice how as I'm delivering the golf club, my left shoulder is moving out the way to facilitate that movement. And as I do that, I can really feel there's some zip in the club head as I go through to the finished position. For me, this is a little bit of a one that's difficult for a lot of golfers to get their head around, but hopefully that video explains it a little bit more in detail. Let's say the first video, a lot of comments on there, that's my fault, clearly didn't explain it well enough, but hopefully that one clears up a lot of what we're trying to do. So hand path, really important. If you get it correct, it can definitely help you. I would say it's one of the things that we see as the biggest difference between the elite golfers and the golfers that struggle is how the hands move through the golf swing because how the hands move through the golf swing is ultimately going to control how the club head works. Now the club head works is really what we're trying to, trying to ultimately control. If we can get that to work better, we should be able to hit some better shots. So I'm going to put my golf swing on the video and you're going to see that I demonstrate these moves pretty well, hopefully. So only a six iron to this par five, but you will hopefully see from that that my hands were certainly more out in the delivery than they were at setup, but they came back in as I hit the golf ball. Definitely didn't shank that, and you won't shank it, I guarantee, if you follow those bits of advice and do it in the correct way. So hopefully that makes more sense. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments box, does that make more sense? Is that something that's, that's kind of been you know, misunderstood by yourselves, but hopefully that does clear it up. All the usual stuff is down below, as well as that comments box, there's a like button. Give the video a thumbs up if you did like it, that really did tell me. And there's also a link to subscribe down there as well. If you're not a subscriber, I would urge you to do so. Absolutely free, more videos coming each and every week. Thank you again for watching, and hopefully we'll see you back here again soon.